In this video we'll be adding icons here, finishing our home page basically. A lot of important topics are in this video so make sure you stick around to the end and let's get started. So we left off with, with this, a custom style, but we want to do better than that. We want a style that looks like this. We want to center it and we also want to add icons so that's what we'll be doing. So we'll finish the home page basically. <laughs> Let's do that. So how do we center it in CSS? So before we type anything, we need to explore the CSS box model. So what is the box model? Wow. If we if we press Control Shift C with Chrome, you'll see different colors here. Let's go on computed here to view it. Now, what is going on here? What are these colors? Here in the middle, we have the content. And the content is what, what actually is there, I guess. The important part, the content's the important part. So, the padding. So we have a border, we can have a border if we want, so. Let me demonstrate that, so if we get styles, Jumbotron, we can have a border here, we can quickly add a border, border, so we type 1px solid black, just to show you, so now we have a, a border, I'm going to remove it soon, but we have a border, so, now we have a different colour, if you look very closely, we have it like white, we have it white actually, so we can see the color. Okay, so now we have a different color, which is this. Um, we have like a, a yellow color, but that is a border. So padding is spacing within the object, within the element. Border is the actual border. <laughs> so it's used for separating content, maybe. Probably used less often. And margin is se separating content or elements from other elements. So if we look here, the padding is kind of within the element. It's still part of it. The border separates the outside of the element from the inside here. And the border is just the border, I guess. <laughs> but it's between the margin and the padding. But the content is the important part. It tends to be less flexible here. And the padding is more flexible. But there we go. That's a basic introduction. So let's have a demonstration. So if we remove the padding here, what does it look like? It looks more compressed. It will look like everything's stuck together because the padding separates. You can use margin and padding, they'll achieve the exact same thing. So padding and margin are very similar. One's within, one's without. Padding within, pad margin without. Border in between, I guess. Content is the element itself, pretty much. That's the fundamentals of it. But there we go. So now we want to push. We want to push this in the middle. How do we achieve such a thing as pushing that in, a, in the middle? So as you can see, I have I've just added loads of margin above there. You can do that. So I've added loads of margin above the how much margin? Margin top twenty five view heights. So what a view height is. Is a dynamic unit instead of pixels, which won't change depending on your view, your viewport, I guess. So if we look at different devices here, it's nearly always kind of in the middle. That's what we want. So, so view heights is how view heights a hundred view heights would be the the height of this screen, the height here is 100 view heights, 50 would be half of it, 25 would be a quarter, and we want a quarter, 
So that's kind of a quarter of that orange area there at the top. It's kind of a quarter of the screen. We want that on all viewports. Cool. So we're going to add margin top 25 view heights. There's also view widths, which is the same thing, but vert and um, horizontal here. We won't need to know that yet. There we go. So now when we refresh, oh, it's in the middle. Exact same positioning. Now, now we've done that. Let's make the background, the nav bar here transparent. Now, because we're using PG, let's go into nav bar. We can easily get the nav bar here. I don't know what this is, by the way, this ID, we don't need it. We can actually rename the ID if we press, if we hover over this and select it. Control D to select all of them on Windows. And we type nav bar. Now, Control D, so basically hold Control D for this ID here without the hashtag. So make sure you do that. So now we're going to use a very specific element here, a very specific selector, sorry. With CSS, I like to have the less specific ones at the top, more specific at the bottom here. Now, what we're going to do is have the background color be white, like this. And now part of it's white, but that's not good enough. Okay, we can just use nav instead, actually. We can just use nav here. And now, there is a problem here. BG light, we want to get rid of BG light. One more thing to say, there is a BG dark, if you prefer. And then you change this to navbar dark or something and then it will go white you can have that but we're going to use bg we're not going to have bg so what is font awesome let's begin with what is font awesome well it's a kind of it's a font family in a way it's a font clue in the name that gives us a bunch of icons what I recommend you do is type font awesome CDN and we want the version 5. I'm going to use version 5 to get the newest ones. That's just the versioning system. So we copy this URL, which is the CSS. We're going to import all of them, which is kind of not efficient, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> it's better to import a few at a time. We're going to type slash here in navbar. So it redirects to the home page. Um, so we want to import this style here globally. So in all PG files, how do we do that? So we type link rel style sheet, yeah, href, and then paste this in. Cool, that's it. Now if you refresh, nothing happens. Good. So now if we go in here, we can add icons. So now if we if we go into font awesome, let's close this. We type star. We're gonna start with the star, which is here. We're gonna start with the star. FAS FA star FAS FA star so so it uses an, uh, an I tag which is italic but it uses italic basically by default we can kind of convert that so if we paste that in here you don't have to do this just a demonstration so it has an I and then two classes FA, FAS star, basically, and I'm going to have it like this. So uh, there is a problem here, which is I want this here. I want a tag here, but it's not letting us have the tag. 
we get this element, we don't have it as text content, and we just tab it, so it's, it's kind of in between here. It's within the, it's within the p tag. We're also going to have a utility class, which is um, in get bootstrap, which is called padding left two. We're going to have padding. We can also have margin left. It's up to you, really. But we're going to have padding. Padding left two. And there we go. We get kind of a space here. We type login here. Sign in alt, that's the one I'm using, so we use this. So now we go into header, I believe. No, navbar, we go into navbar. And we type. So it has a icon here. So we're gonna type I star like that. Away. Cool. And then it's going to be within the anchor element, that's cool. We're going to use span, but we have a problem here, which is we don't want the <laughs> the font goes all weird when we have the span within the italics kind of thing, but there we go. So now padding left two, just to add some padding, uh, padding left one, yeah. So login, and we don't want to star, remember, we don't want to star, we want login, alt. So what have I done, sign in alt. That's a minor difference, there we go. Now commands, the last one. Code, so we're just going to type code, get that, so we can guess what the icon syntax is going to be. Let's do the same thing here. I'm going to call it commands, so fa code, that's it, fa code, cool, done. I don't think we need padding left 2 here actually, but there we go, it's removed, so there we go.